Hell yeah. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the second movie in our Conjuring journey into the Conjuring universe um, which is set out in this wonderful box set and tonight we're looking at the second film The Conjuring 2, The, the Enfield Haunting um, now this is um, a, a film that, that's very close to heart to me um, because it's based in a, a, a true story based in Enfield, which is in the suburbs of London in Hertfordshire. And it's based upon this house um, in, in, in this suburban sort of area on the outskirts of London around in the 1970s. Sort of um, <clears throat> and, and The Conjuring, as you know, is based around Ed and Lorraine, I believe, are the two uh, uh, our two heroes of the film. Let me see if I can double check the uh, the names. Let me put my granddad glasses on. All right, the Jim Royal glasses. Um, uh, it doesn't tell me, but I, I'm, I'm sure um, it's um, Ed and Lorraine. What I can do. I can have a little look at my other phone and it will tell me the names of the two sort of uh, main characters of our of our um films conjuring right conjuring let's have a look yes ed and lorraine warren I was right. Look at that. Whoa. <clears throat> and these are two, I, I don't know if I would say um, exorcists because they're not, or ghost hunters as they're not. I would just say there are um, sort of supernatural investigators and they investigate the supernatural. Um, our first one, we saw the family asking for their, their, their help. And this one sort of begins on a, a very strange sort of way and it sort of connects with another horror series Amateurville and it starts off at Amateurville and it shows us a bit of a story where Lorraine and Ed were investigating uh, the Amateurville house and our Lorraine looking absolutely beautiful as ever she's stunning um, <clears throat> gets drawn into seeing the murders of these poor family that were asleep in bed and murdered by a family member who's supposedly possessed by something demonic in the house and it sort of takes over her and she never really recovers from it and then we get like the build up of the story saying it was very similar to a story that happened in England uh, in Enfield and it comes up saying based on the true story The Conjuring 2 and we cut to London well we cut to London first of all, where we see little clips of all sort of London. We see a, um, the, the Tower Bridge, or we, we see punks, we, we, we see um, the old Kent Road, we see Carnaby Street, we see all this 19 sort of 70s London. And then we cut to Enfield, which, was, like I told you, is in Hertfordshire, which is on the outskirts of, of London. And we see these wonderful wonderful lovely children at, at then at their score a very beautiful score it's a very very sort of edwardian style sort of score and absolutely wonderfully looking and one of the young girls gets caught with her friend her friend smoking and she's with her and she holds her cigarette for her and the teacher comes around and catches her and blames her and so her mum gives her a bit of a roasting <clears throat> And there's other wonderful children in this family. She's got brothers and sisters. She's got a lovely little brother who's got a, like a bit of a speech impediment. Who he sort of um, stumbles upon his words, and he gets bullied quite a lot at school. And these kids, um, and, and and his brothers and sisters really stand by him. And it's this tells the story of a complete unity of family, because this family do stick together. They are whatever they go through in this film. There is nothing 
more wonderful in the whole film than seeing this family bond. There's a true love going on amongst this sort of little family in this little suburban house in Hertfordshire, England. Now, <clears throat> but the, poor, the house they're living in has got a, a history, um, which I'm not going to go through and tell you because that's going to spoil the film, but it's got a history of all, and it haunts the house. And it starts to haunt the kids of the house. And it starts to rub off on the young girl and the young boy in the house. And they start seeing things. And they start talking to them, to the young girl. And all these bizarre things happen. A lot of sleepwalking going on. There's a young, the, the young lad sees a swing swinging at night on its own and it's just like when he's looking out the window when he's gone to get some water because he's had too many digestive biscuits so his mouth's all dry so he goes to get a drink of water and he sees this going on it's all these little observations of like normal day life i mean if ever you've had uh two, three or four digestives your mouth will dry out and this is what this sort of film picks up on and the way that it's set on these girls are absolutely obsessed with um, David Soul and Starsky and Hutch because their walls in their bedroom are absolutely caked with posters of David Soul and Paul Michael Glazier of uh, the Starsky and Hutch and the Bay City Rollers. <laughs> they're, they're all in their bedroom just giving you a real feel of the 1970s with the 1970s decor and sort of wallpaper. But this is not the rich family. These family are living on a bread line. You can see by the house that it looks run down inside. It looks tired. Some walls need decorating. Some room has minimal furniture. Um, and But there's that unity. And they just seem to get on so well. And they're happy with what they got. The mother has no money. But she still manages to buy... The digestive biscuits for the young lad who's obsessed with biscuits. Oh, a bit like me. <laughs> and um, all these weird things happen in the house. There's a flood in the cellar starting to create. There's the washing machine breaking down. And there's all these visions that the girls are seeing and these experiences that they're seeing. And then it starts to become physical. And they seem to see these physical things happening. And they're scared and they're terrified. So they call on Ed and Lorraine in America to come on over and help to solve out, see what's going on in their house. They're very reluctant to, because obviously Lorraine's been through a lot, especially with the Amateurville um, house. So she's been through a lot. They're very reluctant. But when she finds out it's a group of children that is being um, haunted and, and freaked out, then I think that's what persuades them to go over and assist. And she uses her uh, uh, sort of psychic sort of powers or the, her powers or ability of sensing the unknown and, and the supernatural to its fullest in this film. And they bond with the family and the family bond with them. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful tale of, um, I, th I think, of a family sticking together uh, no matter what they're going through. Yes, this may have been um, repeated time and time again, and the, based on a true story. And I, I believe that the the nineteen eighties TV um, spoof documentary Ghost Watch was definitely based around the Enfield haunting. And this, you can see little inklings of this within this sort of film, but obviously in a more uh, sort of lavished and bigger budget sort of way. And the the films went on to spawn a, a, a stage show, and it's also I believe there's another film or even TV series about the uh, Enfield hauntings, um, and so it's a well known case here in the UK, and so it's it's our version of the American Amateurville, if you like, and it's a wonderful wonderful film. The pluses of this edition is it, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's absolutely so 
70s looking it's unbelievable they've captured it so well because they've drained the color out and they've just left little segments of color within there just to give you that sort of warm feeling because the house isn't warm like i told you the warm's drained and drab but the warmth comes from the family and i think because of the, the way the film's lit and the little dashes of color around the film gives you that sense of warmth and it, it's around when the family are around and when it's dark it's creepy as hell absolutely wonderful it's really well acted fantastic our, our main two heroes of course are fantastic once again as they take on their role as um ed and lorraine warren um and the, the young cast is absolutely brilliant too they played the part absolutely magnificently and very convincing um and the film portrays the story in a very um positive sort of light even the outcome may be sort of slightly looked upon as being positive but it's a wonderful wonderful film and to me it is definitely one of the highlights of this series of films uh, of the conjuring universe and i think they're a little bit underrated the films to be honest and I, I, there's a number of reasons why and most of it is people's personal taste um they do move quite quick um there you know there is um quite a quick turn around from scare to scare whereas a lot of older haunting sort of films are a lot more slow burn base um even things like the shining where it's very slow burn but this um is like bam 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 so it's quite quick so that can put quite a few people off but i think the way it's done is done so sort of like um wonderfully almost like this is just starting to happen um it gives you that sense of feeling of shock and terror and you start to feel so bad for these little family you just want them to to come out the other side better and stronger for it really cool film highly recommended guys till the next time please check out some other horror film channels for me check out horror hands horror geek man v film rs designs pizzlewell i'm ice lord cat watches horror movies grumpy andrews haunted house who i believe might have also looked at the conjuring series it might be worth having a look on his channel his reviews are a lot better than mine and a massive shout out to my lad till next time look after yourselves look after one another and i really hope i'll see you all soon